All right, so we're going to come back to this app now. And as you've already heard, our challenge is to make sure that when we are playing this app, we don't have this problem like we have right now when I click on crowding. I want to play measles and then I want to play meningitis. What happens if I click both? That causes if measles, you can have a total body skin rash, flu like symptoms, people and have bacterial fever. meningitis. Yeah, that doesn't work when we can hear them playing over each other. So that's what we need to fix today. We need to be able to fix it so that we can get it to be able to play. And now that we know how to do conditional statements, we're going to work through this and try to make it uh, work even better. So as you can see, I'm starting here on the blocks page of our crowding screen. And we have the work that we did last time. We have the measles button playing, the meningitis button playing. And again, it's doing exactly what we asked it to. The problem is, is we don't want it to be playing at the same time. So now what we have to do is we have to change out the blocks to make it a little more um, uh, conditionally. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get rid of the measles player start, and I'm going to get rid of the meningitis player start. And as we know now with our conditional statement, we have an if-then-else statement. So I'm going to click on control, and I'm going to drag an if-then statement here. And then I'm going to click on the gear, and I'm going to drag in the else statement right here. So once I have that for one, I'm going to do that for the other. I'm going to copy and paste and just drag it in there. That works that easy. Really impressive. So now that we have the if then else statement, now we can be able to fill it in. Now remember, the if is our conditional statement. So that's the rhombus in our flow chart. So the if statement here that we're wondering is, <coughs> is the measles button playing? But we're going to change it to a statement and say it is playing. So if I go to measles button, I'm going to drag down here to measles already playing. So I'm going to find the right box. Is playing That's what I'm looking for. I think I passed it. Oh, I'm on the measles button. That's why I can't see it. Measles player is playing. Okay. So if it is playing, then the statement here needs to be what is the opposite. So if it's playing, we want the measles player to pause. Maybe not stop, just pause. We can come back to it later. The L statement is if it is not playing, we have to do the opposite. So the opposite here is the measles player starting. Now, there's more than one way you could do this. You could do it in an opposite order, but this is how we're going to run it. Now that we have the measles button set up properly, I'm actually going to show you a shortcut to being able to do the programming a little faster using the backpack over here. So don't freak out, but I'm going to click on the meningitis button and click the delete, and now it's gone. But what I can do is I can drag the measles button into the backpack until you see the backpack open. And you hear the little noise. Don't know if you could hear that. But now in our backpack, we have code. And we have the measles button code. I can drag that out here. And now you see the two X's. So that means something's not right. We have an issue here. Well, it's that they're the same thing. So I'm going to go to the measles button here. And I'm just going to change it to meningitis. Since we already have buttons programmed over here and players programmed over here, it's really easy. So I'm going to change this one to meningitis. This one to meningitis. This one to meningitis. Now they're set perfectly. Now here's the perk of having this little shortcut. We're going to do the same thing to the other pages, but before we do, we have to make sure this is working the way we want it to. So I'm going to go back to our program. I'm going to make sure the audio is turned up. And now it's programmed so that if measles is playing, it's going to continue to play. Obviously it's not. But if it is playing, I can pause it. So I'll start it. Measles is a highly contagious I'll respiratory infection. click on it again, and it stops. Now meningitis, same thing. Bacterial meningitis is a contagious viral infection. And I pause it. Now if I click it again, what's going to happen? If you guess that it's going to continue from where it left off, you're right. Infection that causes inflammation of the membranes that cover the brain and spinal cord. Okay, so now that's working the exact way I need to. So now that I know that it works properly, I'm going to go over here to the vector screen and I'm going to use our little shortcut for the vector screen. I'm going to get rid of the malaria button. I'm going to get rid of the dingy fever button. I'm going to go into the backpack and I'm going to pull out the measles button twice. Now look at all these X's. 
What does that mean? Well, it means it's looking for a measles button and a measles player. But do we have that over here in our blocks? No, we don't. But what we do have is malaria and dingy fever. So we can just change these to malaria and dingy fever. So now I'm going to click malaria all the way through here and make sure that works properly. Dingy fever. And you can see I have no underlines or anything. My code is written perfectly. Now we can go over and it should have automatically changed over with your tablet. And we can check to see that it works the way we need it to. Let's see if malaria will play in pause. Malaria is an infection caused by a plus. Good. Dingy fever. Dingy fever is an infection found in hot. Good. So that's working well. Now we just have to do waterborne. So we're going to scroll up here to waterborne. And again, get rid of cholera, get rid of ETEC, and drag measles in here twice. And again, change one to cholera, since we already have everything set up over here. <coughs> one to ETEC, and then just change the buttons. So now, everything should be working the way we want it to. <coughs> what do we do next? You're right, we're going to check it. So, I'm pull up cholera. Cholera is an intestinal illness caused by the V. Pause. ETEC. ETEC is also known as a traveler's diarrhea. Okay, we'll stop there. That's pretty gross. All right, so now it's working the same way. So, we've tested it, it works proper properly. That's exactly what we want it to do. Now, I want us to think about um, what we could do to advance this and make it a little better. So, Let's do this. Let's go back to, let's click the back button. Let's go to our crowding page. So please get to your crowding page. Okay. Now let's think about this. If I touch the measles button, and while I touch the measles audio that's playing, I'm going to touch the meningitis button. I want you to think what will happen. Pause and think about it. Okay, now think about why does this happen. So let's see what happens when we actually do it. And then let's try to figure out why it happens. So I'm going to hit the measles, and then I'm going to hit meningitis at the same time. Measles is a highly contagious respiratory infection Bacterial caused by a meningitis is a contagious measles, viral you can have a oh. skin rash. Now we're back to the way it was at the original. They just keep playing over each other if I click on both. So why do you think that happens? Let's look at our code. When we look at the measles button, all we have it planning to do is if the measles is playing, if we click it, it'll pause, or we can make it start. But it has nothing to do with meningitis. But what we can do is we can add a code to our program to stop the meningitis, or stop the measles playing when we're playing meningitis, or stop the meningitis for when we're playing measles. And it's not going to take much in our program to be able to fix it. All we have to do is think about what is the opposite thing that could be going on. So if I click measles and meningitis is running, what do you think I need to do to meningitis? Well, if you say you want it to stop, then that's the correct answer. So before we get into our conditional statement, we could say when measles button is clicked, the first thing we want it to do is we want the measles button to stop meningitis. And if we do that, we can go down to the meningitis player here. And we can grab a stop, put that before it. Then it would be if the measles player is playing at this point, now we could pause it or we could start it. So let's see if this causes uh, a fix. To make sure it works properly, we have to do the same thing to meningitis. We're going to have to put a call measles button to stop. So I'm going to grab a stop and I'm going to put in here something really simple. Now let's see if when I click on measles, it's going to stop the meningitis and then play it, and vice versa. So, I'm going to click measles. Flu-like symptoms and high fever. And now I'm going to click meningitis. No specific Bacterial meningitis is a contagious viral infection that causes inflammation. Now pause it. So now you can see we can click on measles and it will start the meningitis, or it will, it will do the opposite. Now we don't have them talking over each other. This is perfect. So this is exactly how we want it to be fixed. So now all we have to do is we have to go into the other pages 
to make sure it works well. So we'll go to vector screen, and we're going to put a stop in malaria of dingy fever. we got to get the player. Dingy fever stop before it runs through its malaria. And dingy fever is going to stop malaria player before it even works. Again, using the incremental approach, we're going to make sure this works properly before we move on. Malaria. Malaria is an infection caused by a plasmodium And again, if I click dingy fever, dingy fever is an infection it stops found malaria. In a tropical malaria is an infection caused starts by a over. Dingy fever starts is an over. infection found. Pause. So it still work now it works even better on that one. And then one last page to look at. That'd be our waterborne. And again, if I have cholera here, I'm going to put e-tech to stop. Stop e-tech. And then run our conditional statement. And cholera is going to stop for e-tech first. And then it's going to be able to run it. And of course, the last time we have to go through this, we're going to make sure it works properly. Cholera and then e-tech. Cholera is an intestinal illness caused by the V. Cholera bacteria. E-tech is also known as a traveler's diarrhea. It is cholera is an intestinal illness caused by the V. Cholera. E-tech is also known. And we're not going to get them to talk about diarrhea anymore. Okay, and if we click the back button, we're back to our home page, and everything is working exactly how it needs to. So we've been able to test the behaviors of everything to make sure we can work through them. And we threw in a little extra challenge there. And I even showed you in this video how to do the um, backpack. Now, the nice thing is if we do any other different tab or any other apps throughout this quarter or semester, you are going to be able to keep this here and use it whenever. So if there's ever any good code that you find that you think you'll need to use later, like maybe doing a timer that we'll do later, drop it in here and you can always use it or use parts of it. So that's it for this lesson. Um, hopefully everything worked well for you. The only thing you have to do now afterwards is come show uh, me or the teacher that it works perfectly the way we want it to. And then you'll have a conclusion question to do in your notebook and that's it.